Hey, welcome back. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add water to your scene using the plugin system for water that's in, Un in Unreal Engine 5. Uh, there are other methods to putting in water, um, but we're going to use this one. It's quick and easy. Um, now, it is experimental, and that is one of the warnings that uh, they put it, uh, up against it, uh, is when you go to use it, for you to realize it's experimental, they don't recommend shipping it that way, and we'll take a look at that here in a second uh, when we bring that up. All right, so if you're joining me for the first time, you can catch up on these tutorials for the landscape here at uh, Putting on the Fritz 3D Visualization. Um, the first several videos, we've made landscapes and materials. We've used uh, satellite imagery and uh, world machine to create the world that we're working on now. And then we've uh, modified our materials a couple times so that now we have a blended material that allows us to uh, paint and do those type of things. Okay, so let me go ahead and uh, get my head out of the way. There we go. All right, so this is the world that you see here. Okay, and again, this was my Aspen world uh, based off of an area in Aspen, Colorado. And what I'm going to do is right through here, I'm going to put a river. Okay. And it's actually going to go from this direction down this way because the water is going to flow this direction. But first, I'm going to show you how to do most of the water stuff by making a lake. And we're going to put that over here. Okay. And in this area um, is where we're going to put the lake. Now, we still don't have a sky dome, but we'll uh, address that in a future um, tutorial. Right now, we're just going to focus on water. And um, one of the things we need to do is we need to get the plugin. Okay, now I already have the plugin installed. Uh, I was going to go through that process here, but uh, it seems to keep crashing uh, OBS. And since this is the third attempt at making this video, I don't want to do it again. All right, the way to do this though is you go up to edit, go to plugins, and then up here in the search, you type in water. Okay, now. Right here, I'm going to uncheck it, and it'll pop up with the little... Uh, when you check it, it'll actually say, do you want to uh, restart now? Okay, so when I click check here, right, it's going to say plug-in water is experimental version. Okay, and this is what I was talking about. Um, but just so that you're aware that it is an experimental version. But we're going to go ahead and use it. I'm going to go ahead and say yes. And then down here, it'll ask you to restart. Say yes, restart, and Unreal Engine will do a complete restart. And then it'll pop up and open back up with this. And you can go ahead and close this. Now, there may be another little window that opens up, um, uh, an error window when it does a check, okay? And it'll say that something to the effect that, um, let me go ahead and bring that up real quick. That basically your water body collision um, isn't installed or isn't set up uh, in your version of Unreal. So if you read that little warning and then all the way at the very end, you'll see that there are some capitalized words that say um, water body collision and they're underlined and they're uh, bold in bold. So select it and it will automatically um, put that in for you into your settings here. OK, so just make sure you click on that and have it do it for you. OK, if you get that little warning. All right, so now with the plugin installed, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to Place Actors. And if you don't have Place Actors open, right here, this little box with the plus next to it, hit that, and right down here, open up your Place Actors panel, okay? And I'm gonna type in water, and all of the water add-ins that we've added in should pop up right here, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put in a lake. So I'm gonna grab this lake, throw it right there. Okay, and I'm going to pause this for just a second. Okay, so when I first opened this up, you saw that the water was a different color. Um, that'll be what we do later on. Yours should open up with a dark blue like this, and we will change the color because this is uh, a nice tropical ocean blue, but not really the water color that I want for my alpine area. Okay, so once we drag that in, you'll see that we have this little triangle looking shape here and some water in the middle. And if I were to move this around, you'll see that it will 
uh, affect the shape of my terrain. See, it goes in and it changes the shape of my terrain. I don't really want that since um, this was uh, a world that we've, you know, I pulled off of and went through a lot of work to create. I already have some natural waterways in here. So what I'm going to do, instead of allowing this plugin to affect my uh, landscape, I am going to go over here on the right hand side. So with our outliner, with our water body lake selected, I'm going to scroll down until I find. Oh, did I miss it? No, uh, let's see here. All right, well, I'll just type in effects. So type in effect and we want to uncheck effects landscape. Okay, I'm gonna uncheck that. And when I do that, you'll see that now the water is just kind of sitting on top of the surface. And instead of being pushed down in the water is act or into the ground is actually kind of sitting on top like a little um, mountain, right? Like a little liquid mountain. And it's not too bad, um, but what I'm gonna do, so this is a post-processing and this is the color water. We're gonna change those later. But what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna make this just a, maybe a little deeper. Maybe that's okay, we'll see. Um, so by selecting on the water body, you can adjust the height of it here in your world. Make it taller. So it's gonna try to stick to the ground like that. And we can also push it down and make it th uh, thinner. But I think I'm going to go with that. And now what we're going to do is, um, I guess I'll talk about this real quick. Okay, over here on the left-hand side, we have the land uh, landscape water brush manager. We need to leave that. That's going. That's what's managing the water system for us. This is our water for our lake. And then the water zone is this large area that is kind of hovering up in the sky. Um, I'm going to click and drag and push it down until it's below my visible area and uh, just to get it out of the sky. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna shape our lake, okay? I'm gonna fill in this area throughout here and make this my lake, okay? The way we do that is we can select the different splines here, okay? And we can start to pull them and start to shape our lake, okay? And we can even add additional ones by right-clicking on the white line, and we're gonna add spline point here, okay? And we're gonna need to do that, okay? Instead of instead of just grabbing it and making, the, making it huge with those three splines, we actually need to have multiple spline points. Um, in the previous versions of this, I haven't tried it with this one, but if you didn't have enough spline points, your post-processing wouldn't work correctly. I'm gonna just add in several spline points, start to drag this out, shape it in to where I want it to go. Okay. Add some more down here.
Okay, so pretty pretty fast process. Now, I do think I'm going to want to possibly raise it up a little bit. Now, one of the things I do want to point out, remember how it was kind of uh, hovering out in the out here like a little mountain? And as we pulled it out and it starts to blend in with our terrain, we start to get this blending in where the water meets the ground, okay? And we want to make sure that it looks natural, not uh, we don't have any big steps sticking up right here, okay? And we don't, so that's good. All right, so I'm going to select the water body lake right here again and, and get the original spline point and I'm going to raise this up just a little bit maybe all right looks like it's locked in let's see there we go clicking on the lake I can pull that out a little bit I can raise the water up a little bit make my lake a little deeper and a little further out now I'm going to kind of check to make sure that all of my water is kind of feathering in, not here where it's supposed to be. It looks a little more natural. Okay. All right, so now that we got our lake laid out, if I hit play, go ahead and save everything. Hit play. Check the depth of the water. It's just a little bit over the top of the head of my player, which is good enough. Um, one of the things you can always do is you could go in and you could push down the terrain a little bit using your landscape molding tools to push it down a little bit further. Um, especially if your lake is already as high as you want it on your terrain you don't want it to go up any higher but you need to have more depth you can always push it down and I'll probably demonstrate that on the river in a minute all right so now that we've got that all set up um, the next thing we want to do is uh, probably change oh okay wow we got this error here all right, so I had this happen before, and um, this has to do with this right here, for whatever reason, reason, unloading on me. And at this point, I don't know exactly how to reload it, but one thing I have discovered is if I go to open a level, okay, and then I go back and open my level that I was just working on, okay, Hopefully it's still there. The water does come back. And this water zone unloads sometimes. I'm not sure why. Okay. Um, but uh, once we get everything all set up, whenever we hit play, it does come back. It loads automatically when you hit play, but it just disappears from your, from your world. All right. So let's do a couple things. First, let's adjust the water uh, wave height on our lake. I'm not too happy with the way it looks right now. So by selecting my water and going to my details over here, I'm going to turn that off. And then I'm going to turn the terrain up like that. So that I can see my wave right here. Right here is my attenuation. The higher this number is, the, the wave height and the amount that they kind of roll like this decreases. We end up with more waves but less height. So if I go up to like 7,000... I get a kind of a nice, nice flow look there. Okay. And that's looking pretty good. I like the way that looks. So we're going to go ahead and go with that. And next thing I want to do is I want to change this deep blue color. Okay. I want to change it so that it's a little bit more um, of a color that. Uh, is fitting for a mountain pass okay so I'm gonna scroll down with the water body lake selected and I'm gonna scroll down until now we don't we do not want this one we do not want the HLOD material we're gonna scroll past that one and we're gonna go down until we get to rendering and then this top one right here is the water material for the lake now when I change this this is gonna change the material for the lake itself 
Um, so my default material will change, okay? And um, should be a little blue ball in here, but I'm missing it. All right, so um, what we're going to change is we're going to change. Oh, I see what's happened here. Sorry, I'm putting everything back to default because I was playing around with it earlier. All right, so and that's not the right number. One fifty, three fifty. Okay, so this should be the default numbers that are in there. All right, and um, should be a little ball that's in there. I'm not seeing it, but anyway. So we're going to change both the color of the water and we're going to change the color of the post processing, which is underwater. Okay, and what we want to do is once you open up your material, we're going to scroll down until we find the actual um, settings right here. Okay, and I'm gonna just change this material because this is the color I'm gonna use throughout this project. But if you did want to have an ocean color or a lake that was this color, you could certainly um, make a duplicate of this material simply by finding where it is in our um, folder, which is right here, and we could duplicate this, okay? Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and just change this one. It's probably not the best thing to do, but now, the color I wanted to do is I'm going to pick a color that I found on this website right here, colorcodefinder.com. And I kind of played around until I got this kind of greenish color in this area right down in here. It's kind of a greenish blue. Okay. And these are the numbers I'm going to put in for my RGB. So by checking absorption and scattering and then opening them up. Now, if you try to change it here, it's going to really mess up your material. So you want to change it in the actual RGBs itself, right in here, okay? Guess I'll have to pull this off to the side here. All right, so for the color I'm looking for, it's 140, 179, and 172, okay? And by putting that in, you can see that I get... Uh, get a pretty decent color I've got the light scattering off of it in the, out at a further depth and at the edges it's more of a kind of a transparent clear colored water that I expect to find in a mountain now the other thing I'm going to change is right here in the scattering I'm, I am going to select this and I'm going to scroll it down until it gets a little darker somewhere in the gray I'm just going to go ahead and say okay and then this one you actually have to save and that just gives me a little bit more transparency here at a, out at a further distance, okay? So now I've got the color that I want for my water. And again, if you're, you know, wanting to change it to a, like an alien world, you could obviously, you know, instead of picking these colors like I did here, you can find some RGBs on a different section of this. Say you wanted a pink, purple, red, find that color and insert those into this point right here and it will change your uh, water color okay all right so we got that done now the next thing we want to do is um, because this is the lake material I had no issue with changing it but and it, because it's a color I'm going to use but for my post processing um, I am going instead of changing this material what I want to do is I'm going to make a duplicate of this material I'm going to put that on here and then I'm going to change it because this post processing, you may want to use it. You may be making a scene where you do have an ocean color and you want to go with a darker blue or color. So um, I'm just going to not mess this one up. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the little uh, search button there. It's going to take me to my underwater post processing volume. Okay. And I'm going to duplicate it by hitting control D. And at the end of volume, I'm going to call this, um, I'm going to call this river because it's going to go for both my river and my lake, okay? And I am going to put this over here. So I'm just going to hit the, little, hit the little arrow, and it's going to add that in. And now if I hover over it, you'll see that it says Volume River at the very end. Okay, so now I'm going to open this up. And for this one, when we kind of zoom out a ways, you can see there's a lot going on in this one, right? 
But right here in the center, there's this little blue box. Okay, this is the extension and fog. And that's what they're doing here. They're using a fogging effect to create this kind of dis uh, discoloration and distortion look. I'm going to zoom in until I get to this absorption one right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the little box. And right now it's kind of this orangey color. I'm going to scroll to the left a little bit and lighten this up. By lightening this up and telling it to absorb a different light wave, it's going to change the way my scene looks. So I'm going to kind of go kind of like, like maybe there, kind of leave a little bit of red tint in it still, but make it a little bit more li a lot lighter, kind of a pink color. I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to save that and see what I get. Okay. And now I've got a little bit more of a kind of a, darker greenish blue that kind of goes with what I've done up here okay and in the distance this is this is their settings so um, but it kind of lightened it up it got rid of that really sharp contrasting blue and kind of gave me this murky kind of greenish color which I'm good with okay and so I'm gonna go ahead and save everything all right so now we've uh, got our lake set up if I were to hit play, my character falls into it and can kind of run around. And I got this kind of nice water effect happening. And it moves out to the very edge and just kind of fades away. All right. So now let's go ahead and talk about making a river okay I'm gonna head back over here and I'm going to put this river of course I'm gonna run it full length but I'm not gonna do that here in the video okay what I am gonna do instead is I'm going to um, get it started I'm gonna kind of put it here down through this section here to where it kind of widens right there so um, in fact I don't even need to be this far over we'll just kind of a narrow section here because I'm going to show you um, some settings on it and then where it widens out over here so we can kind of play around with it a little bit. All right, so first thing I need to do is again go back to my place actors. I still have water typed in there and I'm going to find my water body river and I'm going to throw that down in there and I'm going to zoom in on it before I make any changes, okay, and see which way the river is flowing. The river is flowing that direction and I've already said I want it to go down in that direction so I'm going to rotate this around and get it going in that direction. And right now it is still um, set up to distort my or affect my terrain, right? So um, instead of searching for it that way, I'm just going to type in effect again. I'm going to uncheck my landscape, affect my landscape, and it kind of disappears a little bit, but we'll get it back. Okay. And again, same with the, uh, river as with the lake if I select it and hit W and then I can kind of pull it all up a little bit okay and then we can kind of play around with the height of it as we move along because we can move each one of these splines up and down okay so I'm going to select this spline I'm going to pull it more straight now on the river there's the spline that we can move we can move the spline and then there's also on the spline, there's these edges that we can use to shape around the curve as well if we want to kind of modify the shape of it. The same with this as with the lake. If we take a look at it, we have this kind of, once we make it so it doesn't affect our landscape, we get this kind of mountain effect again. And we want to do the same thing that we did with the um, river that we did with the lake. We want to use our terrain to fill out our river so that it actually looks like it belongs here okay and the way we can do that is with the spline selected okay and we're going to take this effect out of here I'm going to click that out of there if we scroll all the way towards the top and all right so we got to actually select the individual splines so i'm going to start here and with the spline selected you see that this changes over here now and underwater, we can affect the river width, the velocity, um, audio intensities for when you have a sound effects added to it. Um, there's also this one for depth, but I really 
in this mode, I really haven't seen much change. I think when it's set up for when you affect the terrain, it raises and lowers how deep it gets. But for this, it doesn't really change anything. So um, what I'm going to do is first, um, before I get too far, in, actually, I'm going to go ahead and do it right now um, because I'm going to stretch these out and it'll be easier to do it initially than having to do it multiple times. So right here for the river width, I already know that I need to make this wider. And I'm going to go um, significantly wider. I'm going to go with 20,000. Okay. And that's going to kind of bump it out to the both edges there. Okay. And I'm going to do that for all three of these. And then we'll start to stretch things out. We may need to make it wider at some point, so we can always come back and affect those the same way, but we can do them individually. All right, so now as I move along, because um, all three of these are set to the same, I'm going to right click right here. I'm going to add a spline, okay? And that spline, when it pops in, should already have the settings in it that I want, okay? So I don't have to keep going back and doing that. Or at least the initial settings. And then I can um, add more in later. And I'm going to add splines behind as I move along so that I can kind of. adjust this as I move okay and one of the things that is probably happening right now is um, because I started out at a higher elevation here and I'm moving to a lower elevation this is also going to um, keep this at a certain elevation so that means my water is going to get deeper as I go further and further down so that may be something that we need to check and uh, adjust as we move along, okay? And um, for example, right here, um, I know that this is probably pretty deep. If I were to hit play with my character, um, yeah, it's very deep and it doesn't, doesn't look right. Okay, so this is where we need to come in and fix it, okay? And... Go ahead and grab the end spline. Push it down. And we'll probably have to do this for several of them. Probably still not quite right. All right, and this is the trial and error as you move along, right? So you're going to have to, yeah. Okay, so um, check it again. All right, getting there. And you can always make it a little bit deeper. It's, you know, this is obviously as we move along, you can check. And this is something you're going to have to fine tune as you go along. And I'm not going to get too much into that. Um, now that we've kind of talked about it, you're you're aware of it and again we want to make sure that at the edges we get this kind of feathering effect um, and if you have areas that that's not happening you may need to either adjust it so it's wider or narrower um, and you can even um, adjust your terrain if you need to and I'll show you that in a second let's go ahead and extend this section out real quick um, Grab a different one. Okay, now we'll go back to this. One of the things about grabbing the initial spline, which is this one right here, is like what just happened. I would move my entire um, river body. <laughs> so I got to make sure that uh, that does not happen. 
And we can also adjust the splines wherever we need to. And you can see here that this one is actually too low, so I can raise it up a little bit. And when you raise it up, you may have to adjust some other splines. This one's too close, so we're gonna pull this out this way. Probably pull it up a little bit. And this will be the fine tuning that you'll have to do as you start to put it in the river, okay? Now, right here, because you know this is like where the river would narrow, right? Um, one of the things we can do is, as you saw over here, we have these different adjustments. So if I select right here, and as the water, same amount of volume is passing through, it's going to go faster. So the water should actually increase in speed in some places and in areas where it opens up and wider, shallower, wider water. It's going to move a little bit slower or have appearance of moving slower. So I scroll down here. We take a look at how fast this water is going. I have that selected. I can change just this segment. Um, I'm gonna increase it kind of a lot just to kind of drive that home. So now if I increase it to like a thousand, it's really, really fast moving water, okay? And we can kind of see that. But if I go back down to the next spline point, it's back to being slow again. We can see that they blend in together right there. Okay, so um, even though I'm not going to show you about the um, change in the color, one thing about the river that is different about than the lake is where to find the material to change it, okay? And if you scroll down to the bottom uh, of the river with the river selected, you'll see that there isn't one that really says uh, river material. There is one that says uh, river to lake transition, and... We're going to go ahead and, and double click on that one, okay? And when we double click on that, that's going to bring up that transition material, okay? And I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of that, so this transition material, and right here where it says parent is our water material river, okay? So I'm going to double click on that and bring that up. And this is the one that you're going to want to make the adjustments in down here under the absorption and the scattering, okay? And that will change your water uh, for your river color to the color that you want it to be okay um and i know i said i wasn't going to show you but um it occurred to me that this uh is different than the lake it's not exactly identical so and since uh i can do it while i'm talking okay and since it's a little bit faster moving water I am probably going to leave it a little less clear um, than the lake. All right, so, but I am going to go back over to the lake, and we're going to talk a little bit about kind of the last step, all right? Once you have your water set up, and you're happy with the way it looks, and you've got the colors that you want in it and everything, one of the things we're going to have to do is underneath the water, we've got our original grass, right? So here I have my grass because this was a flat area. What's going to happen is when we set up our procedural grass, grass will automatically populate on everything that has to do with a grass texture. Okay, So that means we'll end up with um, shrubs and grass and rocks and things like that here underwater. Um, and it'll look exactly the same as it does on land. We don't really want that. And the other thing is, is uh, we probably want a different texture uh, that might go along a little bit better with being underwater. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to go back in and we need to go to our landscape, and we're gonna to go to paint. And with all of those uh, materials that we've added, and you may want to make one that's specifically for underwater. Um, that was this one right here for me, it was gonna be the river rock. But I'm not uh, entirely thrilled with the way it looks, but I'm gonna go ahead and use it for right now, just to kind of show you. And then um, you can always change the materials out later. So I'm gonna start painting it, okay, and I'm going to first increase the size of my brush. Okay, and I'm gonna play around with the fall off a little bit. And probably increase the tool strength too because I just wanna paint this. And you can see that here I got a really, really significant tiling issue going on. Um, and even when I get underwater, it's still, actually it's not too bad underwater with the way it's set up right now. So here you can see that um, I've got this uh, riverbed or under the bottom of my lake. Um, and I can paint this in. 
and with the post processing and everything it actually doesn't look too bad when we get closer um, I have this tiling set up again remember in our materials um, oops that's not the one I want in our materials in our um, let me find my there it is material instance so for my um, distance, so my, my far texture for my river rock, I turn it really far down. I can bring it back up just a little bit. That'll help some with some of the tiling over a distance. And yeah, you can just kind of paint it in there. And then um, as we start to... Um, finish out and put in the details in our terrain, uh, we'll be able to add things like river rocks down in here, um, maybe some types of algae or grass looking stuff. So we can add more detail as we move along, okay? And um, okay, so um, that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully uh, you know, have a better understanding about how this, uh, this tool works and how you can get things set up in your game. Uh, in your landscape area and then be able to um, adjust the coloring and get the look that you want and the feel and we did the water first before we did any of the grass and trees and things like that because we're gonna put our water in and then we'll put the trees and stuff in around it so in the next video we're gonna go ahead and finally get to the procedural grass and uh, getting that put in and also how to use the painting tool to paint in all of the different additional things like trees that you want um, larger shrubs that type of stuff so again um if you have any questions make sure you put them down at the bottom for uh in the comment section and i will get back to you and uh, if you liked what you saw please like the video and subscribe i'll see you next time